All right, Rhythm Rookies, welcome back. Now that you know the basics from Module 1, let's really start to explore how ECG leads give us different views of your heart. In this module, you'll learn about understanding heart walls, limb leads, and heart views, chest leads, and heart views, putting it together, a full-fledged lead wall map. This map will be your superpower. When you look at an electrocardiogram and its leads, you'll instinctively know, aha, this is showing me this part of the heart. Cool, right? So, let's get started. First up, understanding heart walls. To understand how ECG leads work, we need to know about the different sections of your heart. Imagine we're looking at your heart from the outside. We can divide it into different walls, like the walls of a building. In this module, we'll actually focus on five main heart walls to get a really complete picture. These are the interior wall, that's the front of the heart closest to your chest, the inferior wall at the bottom, the lateral wall, which is on the side of the heart, the septal wall, which is the wall in the middle, separating the left and right sides, and importantly, the posterior wall, which is at the back of the heart towards your spine. Understanding all five of these heart walls is key because different heart problems can affect specific areas. And just like before, remember that ECG leads will help us figure out where we are looking at. Okay, next thing. How do ECG leads actually see these walls? Let's start with the anterior region. That's the front of the heart. For the anterior region, you want to look at V1, V2, V3, and V4. These are your anterior region leads, and they're placed right across the front of your chest to give us a really good look at what's happening there. Let's break it down a bit more. First up, V1 and V2. These guys are placed more in the center of your chest, right? Because of that, they're perfect for seeing the anteroseptal area. That's just the part of the interior wall that's closest to the septum, that middle wall inside the heart. So when you see V1 and V2, think septal view. Then as we move outwards on your chest, we get to V3 and V4. These are your main anterior leads. They're positioned right over the main anterior wall, so they give us a direct view of that area. And because they also catch the side part of the front, we often call them anterolateral leads too. So for V3 and V4, think anterior view. For the lateral wall, you should be thinking lead 1, AVL, V5, and V6. These are your lateral wall leads, and they're positioned to give us a view of the side of the heart. Let's look closer at these two. Lead 1 and AVL, those are limb leads, remember? They give us a high lateral view of the lateral wall. It's like looking at the side of the heart from a bit of a higher angle. So, lead 1, AVL, high lateral view. Then we have V5 and V6, chest leads that are placed further out to the side. These give us a low lateral view, meaning they're looking at the lateral wall from a lower angle closer to the heart itself. Think V5, V6, low lateral view. To really get a good assessment of the lateral wall, you need to check out lead 1, AVL, V5, and V6. If you see changes across these, think about the lateral wall. Okay, next up, the inferior wall, that's the bottom of the heart. For the inferior wall, you need to remember lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. These are your inferior wall leads, and they're set up to view the bottom of the heart. These three are pretty straightforward. Lead 2, lead 3, and AVF all give you a direct inferior view. All right, moving on to the posterior wall, the back of the heart. Now, this is a little trickier. The posterior wall is actually not directly viewed by the standard ECG leads. Instead, we have to look for reciprocal changes in other leads, and especially V1 and V2. Think about it. V1 and V2, we said they look at the anteroseptal area, right? Well, that area is opposite the posterior wall. So, if something's happening in the posterior wall, it can cause changes in V1 and V2 that are kind of like a mirror image of what you'd expect to see in an anterior problem. We call these reciprocal changes. So, V1, V2, reciprocal posterior view. To assess the posterior wall, you have to be a bit of a detective and look for those reciprocal changes in V1 and V2 and consider them along with everything else you see on the ECG. Okay, so to wrap it all up, you now have a basic lead wall map in your head. Now, drag and drop and you will be done with the module. This video is part of an interactive course featured by ECG Kid. Unlock full access and keep learning at www.ecgkid.com or no www. I mean, yeah. Get interactive lessons, quizzes, and more exclusive content to improve your skills. 
Thank you.